So far, we've dealt with one wire. We're now going to talk about two. These are parallel wires. So what we have is one wire and another wire. Lessons. Let's start out by um, having, we'll call this one wire one, which has current one. And we have wire two that has current two. Now, to differentiate with, between the two, I am going to hmm, green. We're going to go blue and green. This will be fun. Why are you having one? The things you do are in blue. Oh, well, I'll handle it. OK, here we go. <laughs> this gets. Mildly confusing, that's why I'm pulling out the colored markers. So, we're going to have current 2 in blue. We're going to have current 1 in green. Gosh, that's ugly. Okay. Now, notice wire 2 creates a magnetic field. We take our thumb, we point it in the direction of the current on the, magnet, on the wire 2, we get our fingers curl this way. In other words, for wire 2, the magnetic field above wire 2 is out of the board. And below wire 2, the current is into the board. Which means wire 1 is in wire 2's magnetic field, right? Which means wire one has a current in a magnetic field. So we get out our, the same right hand for the other right hand rule. We point our fingers in the direction of the current. We curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Our thumb points in the direction of the force on wire one, which is toward wire two. Right? All right. We now are going to look at it from the other perspective. Because not only is wire 1 in a magnetic field caused by wire 2, but wire 2 is in a magnetic field caused by wire 1. So we have current 2 and we have current 1. So now we're going to look at the magnetic field caused by wire 1. Our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field caused by wire 1 and we curl our fingers and we get below wire 1. The magnetic field caused by wire 1 is into the board. And the magnetic field above wire 1 is out of the board. In other words, wire 2 is in the magnetic field caused by wire 1 and therefore has a current. And we can use the other right hand rule to figure out the direction of the force because the current is to the right, the magnetic field is into the page. Our thumb points up, and we get the direction of the magnetic field force on wire 2. In other words, two parallel current carrying wires are actually attracted to one another if the currents are in the same direction. If the currents are in the opposite direction, you want to guess what happens? The repel. I'm not going to walk all the way through that. We'd have to do that completely over again. So one thing to be aware of, and this unfortunately is something that's good for you to have memorized is that when the currents are in the same direction, they repel. I'm sorry, that was helpful. <laughs> they attract. And if the currents are in opposite directions, they repel, which unfortunately is the reverse of the law of pulls, law of charges. So, that's just the direction. Now we get to figure out the magnitude. So, magnetic force. The equation for a current carrying wire, that magnetic force is equal to I L V sine theta. Well, let's figure out the force on wire one. The force on wire one, are we going to use current one or current two for wire one class? 
that went well. If we're trying to figure out the force on wire one, which current are we gonna use? One. Current one. Because we're talking about the force on wire one, which is caused by the current on wire one in the magnetic field of wire two. Isn't it fun? So this is the current in wire one. L would be the length of the wire now. The magnetic field for the force on wire one in the magnetic field of wire two, which, ma which magnetic field are we going to use? Two. two. So this is the magnetic field of wire two times the sine of the angle between the current and the magnetic field class, which is? 90 degrees. Okay. Force one is equal to current one times the length times the magnetic field in wire two. Now, we have already figured out the equation for the magnetic field on an infinitely long current carrying wire. It is mu naught times i divided by two pi times the distance, right? It was times a. We already went through and used the Biot-Sivart law to figure that out. So we can now substitute in for this equation. Now, when we're talking about the magnetic field for wire two, this is going to be the magnetic field for wire two, then this current, is it going to be current one or current two? Current two, because it's the magnetic field caused by the current flowing through wire two. In other words, the force on wire one is equal to current through wire one times the length times mu naught times current two divided by two pi times a, where a is the distance between the two of them. In other words, the force on wire one is equal to current one times length times mu naught. Actually, we'll rearrange them a little bit. We'll go mu naught times the length times current one times current two, all divided by two pi a. The way you usually see this in terms of is in terms of force per unit length. So I'll just rearrange that once so you can see it, which is we get the force per unit length is equal to mu naught i or ton one times i two divided by two pi a. Now notice in the end it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the force on one or the force on two, we're actually going to get the same equation. The force on either one is going to be mu naught times i one times i two divided by two pi a.